Okay, so Pi News episode 41. I normally use my 8 gig Pi 4 with Twister OS for Pi News, but uh, for this episode, I'm going to use the Pi Zero 2W. Uh, I've got the old model here on the left. The new model, being quad core, is way, way better. It actually feels much, much better as an operating system, and RetroPie works on it really well. So let's switch into screen capture. So this is Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit, and uh, I have installed a different web browser because the Chromium web browser, when there's a lot going on, uh, it does use a lot of memory. And there's only 512 megabytes of RAM. They've obviously done that to keep the price down on the Pi Zero 2W, uh, but the CPU is way better. So I've installed the Puffin internet browser, uh, and you can see here, uh, it came up with a warning. We strongly recommend enabling the GL driver for best puffing experience, how to enable the GL driver. So let's follow those instructions uh, just to see if that works. It actually interestingly detected uh, that this was a Pi 3B because the processor is almost the same as a Pi 3B. Although I have tried a RetroPi build from Arcade Punks and it didn't boot. I tried playing around with it a bit and it wouldn't boot. So you need to use things that are designed for the Pi Zero. Uh, the original Pi Zero do run on the Pi Zero 2W. So open a terminal. And if you want to skip this bit and go straight into the news, I'm going to do a little bit of Pi Zero 2W at the start and also some at the end as well. But I'll put on the screen now where you can skip if you're not interested in this bit. So sudo raspi config. Advanced options. GL driver. Full KMS. And OK to finish. So now I'm going to have to reboot. And yes. So it reboots nice and quick. Uh, I installed Puffin Browser, by the way, uh, by using Pi Apps, uh, which installed into this Pi Zero 2W absolutely fine. Uh, and then I searched for the browsers and put Puffin on there. So let's open up Puffin and show you how quick it launches. Uh, this is a very lightweight browser. I've done a separate video on this to show you uh, why it runs quicker than most things. Uh, so if we go for Raspberry Pi, I think it defaults to the US. I don't know, there's probably a way of changing this. And it's actually defaulted to 150% uh, on the zoom. There you go, that's better. So raspberrypi.org. And if we go to uh, raspberrypi.com from there, and then we'll get the buy Raspberry Pi option. So Pico. Here you go, 02W, more info. So $15, I think I paid $13.99 from Pi Hut. So we go for buy now. It's gone back to 150%. So if you click on that, it goes to full size. I quite like that. Uh, so, uh, oh, it thinks I'm in the States, look. So I'm gonna go to, although most of my views are from the States, I'm gonna go to the United Kingdom. Uh, and click on Pi Hut. Yeah, sold outlet. Uh, and I think this is going to be, uh, so if you want one, it's worth um, getting one as soon as you can because the performance on these are superb. Let's just try Pi Moroni as well. Yeah, out of stock. Now the browser, as you can see, is working pretty well. Uh, so if I call up something like uh, YouTube, And click on that. I don't know what the video playback is going to be like through this. Hopefully, it'll be pretty decent. Uh, let's go leave PSP video HDR. It feels responsive though, and it, nothing like the original Pi Zero wasn't good for an operating system, but this is decent. So let's just skip the advert and go straight into the video. See what it comes up with as, yeah, it's defaulted to pretty low. 480. Let's just let it play without me pressing anything. Yeah, reasonably smooth. I mean, this isn't the intention for the Pi 2.0, but that's pretty impressive. I'm happy with that. Now let's get a temperature monitor on here uh, because I'm not overclocked uh, and I'm also not using a heatsink or a fan. I have plans to use a fan, but I'm not using one at the moment. So add. Temperature monitor. 
Here we go. So 48 degrees at the moment. That's fine. Okay, so first up in the news, Notebook Check did this story on the Raspberry Pi 4 receives a massive performance boost with Vulkan 1.1 support. Support for Vulkan 1.1.1 brings about a noticeable GPU performance uplift for the already powerful SBCs. So you can see here that some things have got up to a 60% improvement in performance. From the Tom's Hardware story, Quake 3 was already playable on the Pi with an earlier version of the driver, so we look forward to seeing what the updated version can do. I've also done videos on PSP, and I'm trying to think something else had the Vulkan driver, uh, but it'll be great to see it more in emulation to see if it can really improve the performance of that. I like this story from uh, Jeff Geerling. He basically chopped a Pi 4 in half, uh, well not quite in half, but uh, chopped off the USB and the Ethernet. It's worth having a look at. Uh, he's, you can see he's uh, x-rayed it to see uh, which bits were going to be affected and had a look through it. But uh, I won't spoil it. I recommend you watch the video and have a look through the article. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> Just in case you forgot, all of this is running on the new Pi Zero 2W. And uh, currently I have four tabs open. I noticed the other day that this Android 11 video was the 500th in my playlist, so I now have over 500 Raspberry Pi videos. A couple of operating system announcements. So very recently, uh, the latest Ubuntu got made available for the Raspberry Pi officially, uh, so it wasn't a beta version. If you scroll down, Ubuntu Server 21.10, 64-bit uh, is available, so you can see here. Raspberry Pi 3, 4, 400, and Compute Module 4. I actually also have a link for the daily builds of Ubuntu 22.04. I've got this on my M1 Mac, and it runs really well. I haven't put it on my Pi yet, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. Another operating system, Jerry Bond let me know in my comments that uh, MX Linux 21 has come out. And uh, MX Linux is a really nice operating system on the Pi, so I'll definitely be having a look at that. But he's got a video on what's new in it, so check that out. But I will probably be looking at it in the near future. And another software update, this is uh, Lineage OS or Android on Raspberry Pi. This version has now become 64-bit. Thanks to Alex and also thanks to Ashling for letting me know about this. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great operating system. I only very recently did... Uh, a review on it. So if we go down here, you can see it's available for various different devices, phones and all sorts of things. And if we go to uh, the latest one here, 18.1 Android 11, you can see here October 26, 2021. And if we scroll down, uh, there's usually a list of the changes and lots of useful information here as well. Here we go, 2610, switch to 64-bit kernel and user space. Uh, updated to Mesa 21.2. Be interesting to check that out because there are some games that you install on a Raspberry Pi using Lineage OS and they just don't launch. Whether this will make part of the difference being 64-bit, because obviously pretty much every game now uh, on Android will be 64-bit, I would imagine. Next one, uh, I've been sent some batteries uh, for the Raspberry Pi, for the Raspberry Pi 4 and also for the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, which is great timing because the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 has just come out. So this one here, the Pi Sugar 2 Pro. Well, let's have a look at them because I've actually got them on my desk. I've got various things to try out with them. Uh, so this is the Pi, this is the bigger one, this is the one for the Pi 4. So I've got a load of screws and uh, also some cards with QR codes on, I guess, which will take you through to the website. Um, but this is the board, so that's what fits on a Pi 4. And uh, it's also got a magnet in it. You, you can see the magnet here, and if you just pull it apart, then obviously if you want to orient the battery somewhere else, then you have that as an option. If we have a look on the side there, we've got a micro USB and also USB-C as well. So I'll have a play around with that in a, in a future video. I want to have a go with it with some screens and things like that and see uh, what we can make as a portable device. And this is the other one, same sort of thing, couple of cards in there and some screws. And uh, I think this is magnetic as well. Yeah, so this has got, you can see there's a long magnet there. Uh, which attaches the battery, and you can see that size-wise, uh, this matches up, this is the older Pi Zero, uh, this matches up to the Pi Zero. So uh, again, great for portable use, so I'll really be having a look at that and uh, see what I can get running out of that. This was a story I had for an older Pi News, but somehow I missed it out, uh, but uh, it was really interesting. Using Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard PC as a USB keyboard for your PC. Basically what they're doing is they've managed to get the Raspberry Pi 400 
to control a PC. All the information is in there. I mean, I don't know who would want to do this, but I just, I like the fact that someone's managed to get it to work. I also like the fact that it says here, you could also connect a USB mouse to the Pi 400 to save on a USB port on your computer. So uh, yeah, while you're not using your Pi 400 as a 400, you can use it as a keyboard for your PC. And I got emailed a link for this site. Uh, hi, you probably already know of this site for Raspberry Pi info and projects. I just ran across it today uh, from Vanessa. And uh, there's loads of stuff in here. So Raspberry Pi, if you scroll down through, if you're looking for a project, uh, Pi 4, Pi 0, all sorts of things, older Pi's in there as well. Uh, yeah, lots of information. Doesn't like, uh, doesn't like scrolling because there's lots of pictures and information. And when you're only running 512 meg of RAM, uh, it's not ideal but it is working and it's not crashing. Right, as I mentioned before, uh, I wanted to cover uh, more on the Pi Zero. I'm gonna do a separate video on Pi Zero anyway, um, but uh, one of the videos I really liked was explaining computers, and one of the interesting things out of all the tests that he'd done in it, uh, he ran Raspberry Pi, o well, just like I'm running Raspberry Pi OS on this Pi Zero 2, and uh, it is running surprisingly well. I, I haven't really got any complaints. I've had a few instances where the web browser has kind of locked up, um, but it's been few and far between and uh, I've been looking at quite rich video and uh, photos and things like that, uh, web pages, and, it, and it's been coping really, really well. It, it is, it's usable. I mean, you definitely use a Pi 4 or a, a Compute Module 4 instead of this because of the extra RAM. But uh, with various tweaks and things, I think this is, is more like it. And, and certainly power-wise, this consumes a lot less power than a Pi 4. So you can see that you know there's various things that people are gonna use these for. But the test that I really liked uh, was this one here. And uh, the Pi Zero 2, the new one booted in 27.2 seconds. The original Pi Zero uh, is 91.5 seconds. And you can really feel it using them uh, and using it with RetroPi like I've been using it and playing around with. It is way, way better on the new model because it's quad core. Uh, it's made a huge difference. It's a shame they couldn't get more RAM in it, but uh, let's face it, they were trying to keep this at $15, and uh, it's amazing that you can get a device that can do all this for $15. Now I'm gonna go to uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, because they had, uh, and I don't know how this is gonna work on this, because this is a PDF file, uh, and it's a big PDF file. I've already downloaded it on my iPad. I might have to move over to that because I think this probably isn't gonna cope with it. Uh, so, yeah, raspberrypi.org. I don't know where the magazine comes out here. Oh, actually, the magazines come up here, don't they now? Uh, so, yeah, in bookshelf. I don't know how well this is going to run. Let's give it a try. Let's close down the browser so we're using less RAM. Yeah, this is the latest one. Download and open. Trouble is, this is, uh, you know, like a, a magazine. Uh, and it's, you know, nice quality and everything. So I do wonder how well it's going to run. I can close down this uh, text document. Let's give it as much help as we can. I guess I'll save them. I can't remember if I made any changes. Okay, so it's downloaded. I think it's trying to open it. I've got a little timer there. Oh no, it's opening it in Chromium. I definitely don't want to open it in Chromium, do I? Uh, I don't want to restore any pages. Maybe as it's not online, maybe as it's, uh, as it's static images, we might be okay. But yeah, Chromium's been poor on this. Okay, so I nearly completed the whole video on the new Pi Zero 2W. Uh, it is a stunning little machine but uh, this PDF definitely beat it. So I'm gonna go over to my iPad and I'm gonna do it on that because uh, it runs much better on that uh, as you would expect. Okay, so we scroll through. So in this magazine they did uh, an excellent write-up, loads of information. I think this is the one. The smallest Raspberry Pi now packs a quad-core processor and runs over five times faster. So it talks about being the same form factor, so you can take your Raspberry Pi Zero out of your current project and drop a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 straight in its place and immediately benefit from the improved speed. And they talk about the chip as well. Uh, system in package, an exciting new approach by Raspberry Pi that combines the usual system on chip with DRAM, enables a faster CPU to sit in the same form factor. 
So the only thing I don't like about it is the micro USB socket, um, but I understand why they had to keep it the same because it fits into existing projects, but it'd be nice to see a USB-C version in the future, and it'd be nice to see variations with more RAM as well, although it always depends on what you're using it for. This will be uh, over the top for loads of different projects now, which is great to see. So power consumption is still nice and low, and you can see on the other side, analog video and a reset option. Here's a more detailed description of the processor and how it's all put together. The enhanced power circuitry from the Raspberry Pi 3 has been shrunk down and fitted onto the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W's board. And someone's been very clever here, look. Here's a top down x-ray of the system in package that reveals an easter egg. Spot the Raspberry Pi logo shape in the ball map. This is possible because while the connections on the outside are signals, the ones in the middle are ground, stroke, power, and can be arranged into any pattern. Very smart. So I won't go through all of it, um, have a look for yourself, it's a great read and a really well put together article and there's some comments from Evan Upton in there as well. So I figured I'd finish off on the Pi 20W as it's been so great. Uh, I ordered one of these from the Pi Hut because when I saw that people were overclocking them, I thought about how I was going to call it. And uh, I've always been a big fan of the Pi Moroni fan shim, I use this on my Pi 4 a lot and I really really like it. Uh, so with this, obviously you can solder this in. Uh, I haven't got time to solder it for this video, so if I just poke it through the bottom, don't try this at home, uh, and then pop the Pi Moroni fan shim over the GPIO pins. Yeah, so you can see the light came on, the fan came on momentarily. If I put half an SD card in there to spread these pins, if you play around with it, you can, and it's running at 56 degrees at the moment. Ah, there we go, it's come on. It's spinning. Let's switch back into screen capture. And quite rapidly it's dropped down to 46 degrees, 45 degrees. Um, I've got the Tom's Hardware story up here because uh, I was beaten to it. <laughs> so you can see that, uh, I think it was Les that did this from Tom's Hardware. Uh, you can see that he's already got a Pimerony fan shim on there. Uh, and he's soldered his on properly. So you can see here uh, in this screenshot, overclock 1400. Uh, which is very, very close to the Pi 4. The Pi 4 stock is 1.5 gigahertz. So uh, I wonder if we can get this running at 1.5 gigahertz with this extra cooling. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.